tells me he'd be homeless right now if it weren't for the kindness of friends. He's unable to work, lost his house due to all the time he spent in the hospital. But most painful of all, he lost his life partner and fiance. I mean, Sue was my best friend. And that jerk just took her from me. Curtis Goodwin says the night of October 29th replays in his head daily. I keep thinking I could have done something different. Goodwin tells me he and his fiance, Suzanne Pope, woke up to knocking around 4 a.m. A man with a gun was at the door. He goes past me, goes right over to Suzanne and shoots her. And then I just, I panicked and I didn't know what to do, so I started trying to fight with him and he shot me. Police say that man was 31-year-old Tyrick Leslie, now in jail, facing first-degree murder and several other felony counts. Goodwin says this was no robbery attempt. He assassinated her is what he did. He didn't come to rob us or anything. Goodwin recalls that Pope told him about Leslie years ago, a relative of somebody she used to know. Goodwin says Leslie left her with some chilling words. He said, if I can't have you, no one will. Goodwin and Pope made plans to get married this year. There are no words to describe the loss. With no house and no job. <laughs> I don't have anything. All he's left with are scars from his gunshot wounds and photos and memories of his best friend. Just envisioning her face makes me smile. Goodwin says there's one thing he has to do for the healing to begin. In order for me to move on with my life, I will have to forgive him. Hope leaves behind two daughters. The youngest, seven years old, was home at the time of the shooting. Investigators believe Goodwin saved her life by telling her to hide in a closet. Goodwin, of course, has months of physical recovery ahead of him. If you'd like to help, there is a GoFundMe page for Goodwin set up by family members. We've got that link on KETV.com.